So let's practice um, taking the name of an ionic compound and turning it into a formula. And remember, most ionic compounds um, you can recognize because they're going to be a metal and a nonmetal. Um, or you might have one of those polyatomic ions from the list of ions that you are to know and memorize um, for your upcoming test. So let's take a look at some of these. So let's look at, um, I'm going to take number three here first. Let's look at potassium sulfate. So I see potassium sulfate. Notice there's no monodi, tri, tetra to indicate subscripts here because these are not molecular compounds. Um, they are ionic compounds. So I see potassium, I see sulfate. So my very first step is to write the chemical symbols that go with each of these words and to put the charges that go with them. So potassium is K and it has a plus one charge because it is in group one and all group one ions have a plus one charge, which is something to know as well. Then I see sulfate, which is from the list of the polyatomic ions that I am to memorize, and I know that that is SO4 with a 2 minus charge. Usually if I have something that ends in 8 or ite, that is a clue that it is a polyatomic ion and not something straight from the periodic table. Okay. So now I am going to take the charges, and only the charges, and I am going to switch them and make them subscripts. That is step two. Okay, if it helps, anytime you have a plus one or minus one charge, you might want to write the one in to remind yourself that it is going to have um, the number one the, um, as the charge that you are moving to a subscript. But as you get good with these, um, you can just kind of understand that. So I'm going to take only the numbers of the charge and I am going to flip them and make them the subscript of the other. Okay, notice that the subscript of four is not being touched. So any subscripts that are there to begin with should not be moved. They should be there at the end as well. So I'm still going to have a K, I'm still going to have an S and an O, and this little four subscript, but now I'm just going to be adding in more subscripts if needed because of the charges. So notice that I am moving the two, the minus two charge of the sulfate, and that is now going to be the subscript of the K. Okay, I am moving the one to be the subscript of the sulfate, but a one is like not doing anything. There was already one SO4 there, so I don't have to do anything. If that was a number other than one, and I'm giving a polyatomic ion a subscript, then I would have to put the SO4 in parentheses, and whatever the new subscript was outside the parentheses, like if it was a two, I would put it out there. But since there is no subscript um, aside from a one being added, I don't need to add anything else. My final step is just to make sure I can't simplify any more. I cannot. There's a 2 for the K, there's a 1 for the S, and there's a 4 for the O. None of that can be simplified. Um, so my final formula is K2SO4. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try strontium hydroxide. Strontium is SR. It is in group 2, so I know that it has a 2 plus charge. Hydroxide is on the list of polyatomic ions. It is OH with a 1 minus charge. I can either write 1 minus or just minus. Again, I am taking the charges and I am switching them to make subscripts. So the SR is getting a subscript of 1 from the OH, which I really don't have to write in. I'm just going to put it in now so you see that I've moved it. Okay, the OH, which is a polyatomic ion, is getting a subscript of 2. Not just the H is getting a 2, but the O is getting a 2 as well. So I'm going to put the OH in parentheses, and I'm going to put the 2 outside. Anytime I have a polyatomic ion, something from that table you have to memorize, and you're giving it a subscript, it must go outside of the parentheses. If it were not outside the parentheses, it would look something like this, and it would seem as if there's only two H's and one O, which is not the case.
let's do magnesium nitride. For magnesium nitride, magnesium is Mg. It's in group 2, so it has a 2 plus charge. Nitride, it doesn't end in 8. Nitrate would be from the polyatomic ion table. Nitride tells me, oh, okay, that's just nitrogen, N, with its charge. Okay, it has a 3 minus charge because it's in group 15 or group 5A. Um, it would need 3 more electrons um, to get to a noble gas configuration. So anytime I see things ending in IDE, a lot of the times, unless it's hydroxide or cyanide, I mean, it indicates that it's the element from the periodic table that has gained or lost electrons and is now an ion. Okay, so again, same thing applies. I take the charges, just the number, I bring them down, I switch them to make subscripts. The Mg now has a 3 subscript that it got from the nitrogen. The N now has a 2 subscript that it got from the magnesium. And this makes sense. I need 3 magnesium ions, 3 times 2 plus, which is 6 plus, to cancel out the charge of the nitrogen ion, or the nitride ion. I need 2 3 minuses, so that would be 6 minus. I check if this can simplify. It can't. I get Mg3N2. Let's do another. We have, um, let's try manganese 4 phosphate. So manganese is Mn. The reason that I see a Roman numeral there is because manganese is a transition metal ion that has more than one charge. So anytime I can't just figure out the charge, um, it, there's going to be a Roman numeral there. Um, so manganese, I know, is one of these transition metals, and that's why I see an IV, which means 4 plus. You should be able to figure out the charges of group 1, group 2 metal ions, and you should know that aluminum is 3 plus, zinc is 2 plus, and silver is 1 plus. Okay, so magnesium for, or manganese, sorry, 4 plus, and phosphate is one of the ions that you have to know from your list. That's PO4, 3 minus. Again, we take the charges. We flip them to make them subscripts. The MN is getting a 3 from the phosphate. The PO4 is getting a new subscript. I don't want to move the 4 that's there already. Remember that any subscripts that are there to begin with should be there at the end. So the PO4 is going to go in parentheses, and the new subscript of 4 is going to go outside of it. Check if I can't simplify. Okay, I cannot. 3 and a 4. And that's my final answer, MN3, PO4, 4. Let's just, for the sake of learning, say that instead of manganese 4, this were manganese 3. Okay, so this were Mn3+. Plus. Okay, then the phosphate would be getting a 3. Can I simplify this? Yes, I can. The 3s can cancel out, and this would just become MnPO4. But this would be manganese 3 phosphate. Okay, for ionic compounds, you always have to write the empirical formula, the simplest formula, because in actuality, ionic compounds are made of millions and millions of ions, um, all ionically bound together, and we are just showing what's called the formula unit, the simplest ratio possible. These are not molecules because they are not molecular compounds, so they actually are not written with a molecular formula. You always write the simplest or the empirical formula.